We have with us Alec Ross. He is the Senior Advisor on Innovation at the Office of Secretary of State. Uh, he's been very active in the Obama campaign, and we'll ask him more on his roles, former and current. Alec, welcome. Thank you. I want to start uh, from your earlier role, uh, where you started uh, your foundation, which was a three people foundation in a basement, which is now in four continents. That's right. Uh, just wanted to ask you a little bit more about it. Sure. I mean, this was the first, this is sort of the first case of entrepreneurship in my own life. Uh, I, I did community development work and was an inner city school teacher during the 1990s. And during the 1990s, you know, as we all saw, there was this extraordinary technology-led transformation of the economy and of the way that people communicated and transacted business. And with globalization creating increasingly frictionless labor and capital markets, what I saw was there was this gap, so to speak. There was a gap about making investments in poor communities so that people growing up in those communities could become the knowledge workers of the 21st century. So I and, and, and a couple colleagues started uh, an NGO called One Economy, the purpose of which was to help build a bridge between people of low incomes and the 21st century economy by focusing on, issue, on issues of infrastructure, of content, educational online content, and human capital, really focusing on young people and ensuring that they can grow the skills that they need to be able to compete and succeed in tomorrow's workforce. Now, your role at the State Department as a Senior Advisor for Innovation, mm -hmm. that puts you in a different league where you are actually able to empower a lot more people around the world. That's the hope. Yeah, so, so the idea behind this position essentially is, is to think about how we can practice 21st century statecraft, meaning how can we migrate from the typical way in which diplomacy has been practiced over a mahogany table with a porcelain cup of tea, but empower people. And, 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 and that can go in a number of different directions. So this can be the American people engaging with, with citizens abroad. This can be, as was the case with President Obama, speaking directly to the Persian-speaking people of the world with his no-ruse message. The internet allowed President Obama to engage people around the globe that he previously wouldn't be, be able to. And so it's going from statecraft being ex practiced exclusively government to government, but also people to government, government to people, and people to people. And just if that seems overly abstract, one practical example of this, we can look back to earlier this week when Hillary Clinton announced a $110 million humanitarian aid package to, to Pakistan. And as a part of that, in addition to the dollars granted um, to help with refugee relief there. There was also a program put in place where people could text um, the word SWAT, S-W-A-T, representative of the SWAT Valley, to 20222, and a $5 donation would be made to the United Nations um, Refugee Relief Program. So it's all about that. That's a way of getting the American people to engage and, and being able to show respect and support directly from the American people to the Pakistani people. You know, one of the initiatives uh, that people are trying to look at, which is why we are holding this conference, is to promote entrepreneurship as a policy, hopefully, through the State Department. Um, you have worked within this country, and now, obviously, you, you know, have a much broader view. But entrepreneurship is very different here, because the ecosystem is in place. Yes. It's been here for years. It's not so in other parts of the world. How do you think we can tweak it to make it cut, you know? Yeah, I, I, think that, I think that the role of the State Department in fostering entrepreneurship abroad is actually very difficult. I don't think that you can just say, oh, we're going to create a Silicon Valley, you know, in Zambia. Oh, let's create a Silicon Valley in Jordan. It doesn't work that way. Um, it's a very complex ecosystem that has education at its core. And I think it's a little naive to think that our foreign service officers are just going to be tasked to go catalyze entrepreneurship. Um, that said, there's some things that can be done. Um, there's some things that can be done to help create conditions for entrepreneurship. Specifically, we can support educational programs abroad. At the core of entrepreneurship is education. Um, we can we can help create an environment that lends itself to investment. And, an, and a connection between American entrepreneurs 
and aspiring entrepreneurs abroad. So one of the things that we've been doing lately is we've been taking successful executives from the United States. And I should note that being a successful executive in the United States doesn't necessarily mean you're an American. I mean, we are a country of immigrants, and we are a country where many of our business leaders today come from around the world. And we're now trying to share that expertise and share essentially the recipes for success that have worked here with people from other countries so that, that those can be a set of lessons that they then can adapt to the extent that they're applicable um, in their own pr business practices abroad. All right, Alec, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Appreciate your time. Thank you.